This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hello friends, uh, I have an important video for you on how to go about in a case wherein we have had a capsular extension to the equator in an intumescent cataract. This is an intumescent cataract with a tense anticapsule in a 60 year old male patient. After seeing the anticapsule, I'm injecting a dispersive OVD and the, my plan is the usual, that is to make a two-stage rexus, initial small one, decompress the bag and then do a larger one. So I puncture the anticapsule and trying to raise a small flap, but suddenly I seem that things are not under my control. A radial extension suddenly appears from the opposite end of the tearing flap. Somehow it stops in between. Uh, I'm thinking I still got a chance to retrieve this. The chamber is still all right, not shallowing. My dispersive OVD is still holding the chamber in place. I still believe that I can retrieve the rexus back and go in with my forceps. Alas. So finally, I end up again having the Argentinian flag sign, but this time it was really slow. So now we have a problem. What to do? To FACO or not to FACO is the big question. Well, we should be ready with multiple options to deal with these adverse situations. Uh, converting to manual SICS is certainly a good option. No shame in converting to SICS or ECC. Uh, if I would want to go ahead with FACO, there would be uh, a couple of ways to do it. One would be to perform an antechamber FACO from mobilizing the nucleus out into the antechamber and second would be to divide the nucleus in the bag itself carefully and then aspirate the quadrants in the supracapsular area. Well, I decided to go ahead with FACO purely based on these intraoperative factors. I had excellent visibility with the dilated pupil, cataract was not dense and most importantly the visibility of the tone anticapsule flap was quite good. The tone anticapsule flap has great clinical significance, which I'll be describing shortly. Before beginning the FACO, I must ensure that these principles are duly followed during nucleus emulsification. There should be no hydrodissection, there should be no or minimal rotation of the nucleus, and of course, always maintain the anti chamber uh, very effectively by using safe parameters. So going back to the anterior capsular flap, let me describe the importance of keeping a close eye at this flap during the entire procedure. Dr. Rohit Om Prakash from Amritsar, India described this concept of flap motility sign, which essentially is, as long as the tone anticapsular flap is everted and fluttering, it indicates the anticapsular tear has not extended beyond the equator. But if the tear extends beyond the equator and goes into the posterior capsule, then the flap will stop fluttering and would get inverted and would hint that we are staring at a possible PC tear. So the message is, if you don't see the flap inverted and fluttering, then it should warrant us to convert a, to a SICS or ECC to prevent a nucleus drop in such a situation. So keeping one eye on the anticapsule flap, I proceed to perform my FACO chop gently in a controlled manner without exerting much pressure on the bag during lateral separation. The first piece is then aspirated without rotating any fragments. And now without rotating the nucleus, the second chop is created and the fragment emulsified uh, in the supracapsular area. Now we have got some space in the capsular bag. The third fragment of the nucleus is then gently maneuvered uh, before consuming it. And at every stage, I can clearly see that the anticapsular flap is everted and fluttering. Before coming out of the eye, I inject OVD through my non-dominant hand to ensure that the chamber does not shallow. After the first heminucleus is removed, there is enough room now in the bag and hence I can afford to gently maneuver the nucleus around 
but only after I filled the bag with OVD. I am performing a horizontal chop to divide the second heminucleus, the fragments then emulsified with ease. Now is the time to remove the cortex and again we can see clearly that the capsule flap is everted and fluttering which is a good sign suggesting that all is well so far. In this case we had actually planned a hydrophilic IOL and hydro implantation is my usual technique uh, when I am implanting these lenses but in this situation I consciously avoid the technique and here I am implanting this lens after filling the bag with OVD. Moral is better to be safe than sorry. The lens is oriented in such a way that the haptics are perpendicular to the axis of the radial extension of the anterior capsule. The OVD is then removed both in front and behind the lens. I'm not so aggressive in removing the OVD behind the lens this time just to avoid any extension of the capsule tear. At this stage, you can still see the flap fluttering here. So all is well, as long as the case does well. To conclude, uh, watch out for the mobility sign when you're in a situation that excess has run away. As long as the tone flap is everted and fluttering, we are fine. The moment it stops fluttering or has become inverted and stiff, then be aware that the tear has reached beyond the equator and has possibly reached the posterior capsule. That's it for today and thank you for your attention.